today we will talk about space vector PWM. Space vector PWM is one way of or one technique of switching the converter. So, before we talk about space vector PWM, uh, let us understand what are space vectors. So, space vectors, uh, the origin of space vectors, uh, the origin lies in rotating MMF in machines. Okay. The concept of space vector has come from the rotating MMF in machines. So, we have we know from our basic uh, understanding of machines that suppose we have three sets of windings in for example, the stator of the uh, uh, of uh, an induction motor. Uh, if we have three sets of windings which are spatially displaced by 120 degrees. Uh, for example, let me give you an example here. So, we have three sets of winding for example, like this. Uh, these may be termed as A phase, B phase and C phase. These three windings are spatially displaced by 120 degrees. If we send a current through these three windings, which are 120 degree apart in time, okay, uh, in that case, so the current through each of these windings produces its own MMF which is oscillating in nature. However, the resultant of the 3 MMF is uh, something which is a rotating MMF here, okay, the resultant. So, <coughs> uh, the res resulting MMF uh, or is having a fixed magnitude and direction. Okay. So, it has a fixed magnitude uh, and it will rotate uh, at the same frequency at which the A, B, C phases are excited. This we know from the basic understanding of electrical machines. Uh, <coughs> the space vector concept also comes from there. What is the advantage of this rotating MMF concept? If you see it conceptually, it is very advantageous to have a single quantity representing the three, uh, the variations happening in the three phases, okay, three axis. So, space vector is a concept in which uh, we are kind of like representing three variables by a single vector. Okay. So, this is useful in many, many applications. First and most useful is that you are no longer going to deal with three different quantities in three different phases. So, you can represent it by a single quantity and additionally, it is very easy to visualize this quantity. For example, we can easily visualize the resultant air gap, uh, resultant flux is rotating in the air gap of the machine. So, this is a single quantity rotating in the machi machine air gap. So, similarly, space vector is also a very useful way of uh, representing three variables and it is very helpful in visualization of the resultant of the three phases working together. But space vector is basically a mathematical concept. Okay. Uh, the, for example, the flux in a machine is really a physical quantity which is residing in the air gap of the machine, but space vector is not necessarily a physical quantity. It is a mathematical concept. So, for example, we can define the space vector of voltage, we can define the space vector of current, but they are not necessarily a physical quantity represented in an actual space. So, these are mathematical concept. So, let us see what uh, we, um, how do we define the space vector. So, space vector uh, for example, of load phase voltage is shown here. 
this is the resultant space vector or the space vector is defined. <coughs> so, it is a combination of uh, three quantities and these three quantities since we are talking about load phase voltage space vector. So, V A n is the A phase load voltage, V B n is the B phase load voltage and V C n is the C phase load voltage and we are multiplying V B n and V C n by this uh, operator here and this operator basically helps us to uh, represent the three quantities by a single uniform vector that is V R T. Okay. This is basically this e to the power j 2 pi by 3 corresponds to the axis B phase axis and e to the power j 4 pi by 3 corresponds to the C phase axis. So, basically we are defining the resultant space vector as the instantaneous magnitudes along the three phases, phase A, phase B, phase C multiplied by the rotation of this axis into one single phase. Okay. So, this is what uh, defines space vector. Additionally, we have multiplied, we have a multiplying factor of 2 by 3 in the front and that 2 by 3 is uh, sometimes uh, people use 2 by 3 and sometimes some researchers or some uh, books you will find that we, they have not used 2 by 3. So, 2 by 3 in this course we are using this 2 by 3 because this is a power invariant transformation. The power from the space vector when you multiply voltage space vector with the current space vector then you get a power invariant transformation. So, that is why we are using the 2 by 3. Uh, so, in a similar way like we have defined the space vector of say uh, load phase voltage, we can also define the space vector of current. Okay. The space vector of current is the instantaneous values of the three phase currents I A T, I B T and I C T and then I B T and I C T are multiplied by this e to the power j 2 pi by 3. Uh, and e to the power j 4 pi by 3. So, uh, this uh, resultant V R T and I R T have both, both magnitude and angle. So, they are called space vectors, but uh, the individual quantities uh, this uh, for example, I A, I B, I C they can be balanced or unbalanced okay? and they need not to be sinusoidal. So, it can be sinusoidal, but it is not necessary to have these quantities three quantities as sinusoidal. So, we see that space vector is uh, kind of like a mathematical concept, okay. but it is very useful in visualizing okay, how the resultant of three systems is uh, appearing on the, uh, on the plane. Okay. So, in order to understand or in order to visualize it better, uh, we have taken this current space vector here. Okay. So, here <coughs> on the top we see that there are three currents for example, uh, load currents uh, and <coughs> these are the, uh, these are we have taken sinusoidal, uh, sinusoidally varying currents I A, I B, I C three phase current. Uh, now, uh, the resultant space vector for this uh, three phase current is shown uh, by these diagrams here uh, at different time instant. Okay. For example, uh, if we see that at omega t equal to 0 that is at 0 uh, time here omega t equal to 0, we see that uh, I A, I A vector has the uh, I A, the instantaneous value of I A T is having the maximum value while I B and I C are negative, uh, but they are equal negative values. So, if we can visualize the uh, three axis which can be written as 
So, we can visualize that this, this is the A phase axis. So, this is the A phase axis, this is the B phase axis and this is the C phase axis. Okay. So, if we have uh, the currents which at omega t equal to 0 is something like this that I A is maximum while I B and I C are, uh, are negative equal values. So, at that point then I A will have the maximum value along this axis whereas, I B and I C are both negative. So, I B has a negative half amplitude on this direction downward because I B axis is in this direction. So, I B is downward and I C is again negative, uh, but in this direction because the C axis is like this. Okay. So, we see that <coughs> the resultant when you apply the resultant which is found out from this formula here uh, 2 third I A T plus I B T e to the power j 2 pi by 3 and I C T e to the power j 4 pi by 3. If we apply the formula the resultant is this I R here which is having the same amplitude as I A. Okay. Now, <coughs> if we take another time instant say omega t equal to pi by 3 then we see here that I A has reduced to a lower value while I B has increased and I C has reached the negative, uh, negative maximum. So, the resultant space vector, so I A has reduced in magnitude, so it is still in this direction, I B is positive and it has become like this, while I C is negative peak, so which means C axis is in this direction, C is in this direction. So, uh, I C peak is like this here and therefore, the resultant I R is lying here. So, at omega t equal to pi by 3, uh, the space vector I R initially was here at omega t equal to 0 and has moved by pi by 3 angle uh, to this position the magnitude of I R remains the same as before. So, in this way if we go on doing the analysis at other points of time, we will see that the resultant vector is basically rotating in a counter clockwise direction having or keeping the same amplitude all the time and rotating at the same frequency uh, by which this or uh, dictated by the uh, frequency of the I A, I B, I C signals and you can understand from here that this concept here is very similar to the rotating MMF concept in the electrical machines. So, we are basically now representing I A, I B, I C these three quantities by a single space vector which is I R having a magnitude at an, an, an angle at different points of time. So, <coughs> this is the major advantage of having this space vector concept. Okay. Now, for a converter which is shown here, uh, we can also have the space vector of pole voltages, space vector of line voltage, we can have space vector of load voltage and etcetera and load space vector of current etcetera. So, space vector can be any three phase variable. Now, here when we are talking about the space vector, we are uh, basically interested into the load voltage space vector that is the voltage applied on the load that is V A n, V B n, V C n. So, this is primarily the space vector in which we are interested in because this is what we are actually extracting out of the converter and get uh, and impressing on the load. So, when we analyze the space vector of the load phase voltages, 
first let us understand that what can the converter produce ok. Now, the pole voltage of one phase of the converter has basically two switching states as we have seen here this um, any phase AC and uh, this upper and lower switches are complementary. So, this voltage V A uh, with respect to the O point which is the negative of the DC bus the V A O voltage uh, can be either V D or 0 right. So, we define two switching states of this phase A of the converter. So, V D is taken as 1 and 0 is taken as 0. So, there are two switching states from uh, each phase of the converter as the two switches top and bottom switches are switching. So, therefore, if we since we have three phases, uh, so the converter will be having 2 into 2 into 2, 8 switching states here. Okay. So, these we can also uh, write is as like this like 0 0 0, 0 0 0 means A phase is uh, uh, having a switching state uh, of 0, B 0, C 0. While if you take 1 0 0 which means A phase uh, V A O is 1 and V B O and V C O are 0 and 0, 1 corresponds to V D voltage. So, this state for example, uh, the this switching state 1 0 0 will be uh, will happen when uh, the upper switch that is S A in phase A is turned on while S B bar here and S C bar here will be turned on the lower two switches in B and C phases will be turned on and we can get this 1 0 0 switching state. Okay. Now, we can also understand that so there will be there will be total 8 switching states. Out of these 8 switching states the 0 0 0 and 1 1 1 these are called the 0 uh, vectors okay, uh, or 0 switching states. Okay. We will talk about this uh, 6 active vectors and 2 0 vectors a little bit later when we talk about the space vector diagram. Now, what is the load phase voltage space vector for 1 0 0 combination. So, these are the 8 switching states possible from the from the converter and let us find out what is the load phase voltage space vector for any one of this combination. So, when I say 1 0 0, 1 0 0 means A phase is 1 uh, that means V D that is what is written here V D and B and C are both 0. Okay. Now, in uh, one of the previous classes we had derived that V A N T is 2 third V A O T minus 1 third V B O minus 1 third V C O. So, if you substitute these values we see that the V A N is 2 third V D here. And similarly, V B N if you also substitute these values V B N is 2 third V B O minus 1 third V C O minus 1 third V O we see that V B N is minus 1 third V D and V C N is similarly minus 1 third V D. Okay. So, these are the instantaneous load phase voltages V A N, V B N and V C N and their values are 2 third minus 1 third and minus 1 third V D. So, the resultant load phase voltage uh, space vector for 1 0 0 switching state combination will be 2 third V n plus V b n e to the power j 2 pi by 3 plus V c n e to the power j 4 pi by 3. And if you substitute these values into this equation, then we see that V r t is 2 third V d e to the power j 0 which means that the resultant load phase uh, space vector uh, for the switching state 1 0 0 is lying with the A phase axis because it is e to the power j 0 and its magnitude is 2 third V d. So, similarly for all the other 8 uh, switching state combinations 
we can deduce the resultant space vector and this is shown here in this uh, table. So, for example, V 1 is this 1 0 0 and the resultant space vector is 2 3rd V d e to the power 0 and 0 when you have switching state 0 then the resultant space vector is also 0. Similarly, when you have 1 1 1 the resultant space vector is also 0. Okay. For any other combination you can see 1 1 0 for example, if you can put it into the formula then the resultant space vector is 2 3rd V d e to the power j pi by 3. Okay. Now, <coughs> so we can uh, for these 8 switching states we find that there are 2 combinations 0 0 0 and 1 1 1 they are producing the resultant space vector as 0 and so they are termed as 0 vectors. Okay. The resultant uh, load phase voltage space vector is having 0 magnitude for 0 0 0 and 1 1 1 these two switching states. So, this is called as the 0 vector whereas, for other combinations you can have all the 6 active vectors which are termed V 1, V 2, V 3, V 4, V 5 and V 6. Okay. And we can also, so all these active vectors are having the same magnitude of 2 3rd V d, but the angle is changing. Okay. So, we can now plot it, we can now plot it in the, uh, in the plane, in the space vector plane. The space vectors can also be obtained in a graphical way okay. and it is quite simple because suppose you have 1 0 0 combination. Uh, so, in 1 0 0 switching state com combination you can have a space vector of 1 of magnitude 1 on the A phase axis and no magnitudes on B and C phase axis. So, therefore, the resultant is 2 3rd V d here. So, when you have a 1 1 0 combination then you will have 1 here uh, and B phase also 1 here and the resultant is here 2 3rd V d. Uh, similarly, you can take up the other um, combinations like 0 1 1 combination. If you have 0 1 1 combination then you have uh, no vector means A phase does not contribute any vector while B phase uh, has 1 and C phase has V d uh, and the resultant is 2 3rd V d along this. Okay. So, we see that uh, the instead of uh, all the time going back to the uh, formula, we can also find out the resultant space vector using this simple graphical method. Okay. Uh, where um, okay. here A, B, C axis are uh, shown in this. So, the resultant space vector, so we see that there are 6 resultant space vectors uh, with their magnitude 2 3rd V d and they are at an angle of 0 degree 60, 120, 240, 300 and 360 degree and these are the switching states which are producing these resultant vectors. So, there are 6 resultant vectors and 2 0 vectors. Okay. These are the vectors in this space. Okay. Uh, these 6 vectors or the tip of these tip of these 6 vectors can be joined with an imaginary hexagon or in a, uh, this is the boundary. So, you can see the boundary of the space vector diagram is this imaginary hexagon. Okay. And with this imaginary hexagon and the vectors which we have 
drawn here, we can see that the whole space vector diagram, which is actually a regular hexagon, is divided into six sectors, sector 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, we see in this space vector diagram, the boundary is a regular hexagon. There are six sectors and there are eight switching states, which are indicated in this space vector diagram. Okay. Six active vectors and two zero vectors. Now, so this is the complete uh, space vector diagram, where we can see that the uh, six active vectors uh, and the two zero vectors are shown along with the boundary of the space vector diagram. And also, we see that uh, this <coughs> space vector diagram is uh, divided into six sectors. Okay? These triangular regions are called sectors. So, therefore, there are six sectors 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in this space vector diagram. These sectors are useful when we do the switching on the space vector diagram. Okay. <coughs> we will see that sometime later. Okay. Now, <coughs> how to switch? So, now we come to the next uh, topic, which is the space vector PWM. Okay. Now, how to switch these eight vectors, so that the correct voltage is impressed on the load. So, this is the question that we are asking uh, that okay, we have got a good understanding of the space vector diagram that it is a uh, eight, there are eight vectors forming the hexagon. But now the question is how do we switch these vectors? Okay. Uh, <coughs> basically, we will use uh, one of the uh, very uh, established principle that is the volt second balance of uh, the principle of volt second balance that concept we will use here also. Later you will understand that the space vector PWM is nothing but extension of the sine triangle PWM which we have already studied earlier. This technique of switching the eight space vectors in such a way that the resultant voltage or current is uh, realized is called the space vector PWM. Okay. So, it is a switching strategy by which we can uh, appropriately switch the vectors for certain time durations. Uh, so, the space vectors uh, are switched for certain duration of time in a cycle to produce the resultant vector. Okay. In, in space vector PWM, the space vector are switched for a particular duration of time in a cycle and it is dictated by this uh, equation here, which is V r into T s is equal to V 1 into T 1 plus V 2 into T 2 plus V 0 into T 0. So, what are these? So, V r into T s is the resultant space vector okay, uh, which is applied uh, for a uh, during the switching timing interval T s. This total switching uh, interval or switching period is T s and the resultant space vector is V r which is applied for this time T s. Now, T s during the time T s in order to realize this uh, resultant vector or in order to produce this resultant vector, we are switching the three nearest vectors which is enclosing this resultant vector. Okay. So, for example, if this is the resultant vector, we see that it is lying in sector 1. If it is lying in sector 1, then this vector, this vector and this vector that is 
v0 or v7 and v1 and v2 these three are the vectors which are enclosing this resultant vector vr okay uh, this so as so we will switch the these three vectors this one this one and this one for a certain duration of time in a switching cycle ts okay now basically it means that we can visualize it as if like adding some weights to the three corners of this triangle here okay so if we add weights the resultant will move depending on how much weightage we add to the three corners of the triangle for example what is this weightage this weightage is nothing but the duty cycle for example if we in a switching cycle ts in a switching period ts if we apply this vector for more duration of time and these two vectors for less duration of time then the resultant vector will come very close to here okay resultant vector will come very close to here on the other hand if we apply this vector uh, for a long duration of time within the time period ts that means this vector is being applied for the largest fraction of the total time period ts then the resultant vector will move here closer to this one it will be far away from these two vectors v1 and v2 so basically we are as if like we are adding weights to the three corners of the triangle and these weights are what these weights are the time for which these vectors are applied so for example t1 by ts is the vector is the weight which is t1 by ts is the vector uh, is the weight which is being applied on the vector v1 similarly t2 by ts is the weight of v2 and t0 by ts is the weight for the zero vectors so the resultant vr will accordingly move depending on how much you add the weight to these three corners there is additionally we see that the zero period actually is divided into two zero periods why this is called a zero period t0 because we are applying the zero vector during this time okay so we are applying the zero vector for t0 time we are applying the v1 vector for t1 time and v2 vector for t2 time okay additionally this zero vector t0 is divided into t01 and t07 these two periods we will see why it is done this is done to uh, reduce the uh, number of transitions in switching but we have divided t0 into t01 and t07 of course ts ts will be the total time period uh, of switching is equal to t1 plus t2 plus t0 which means the sum of the time uh, for which this vector this vector and this vector are switched will be equal to the total time period total switching time period ts now one more uh, point to observe is that in this particular case we have uh, we have taken these three vectors v0 or v7 v1 v2 to realize the vector vr now it may not be necessary or it may not be uh, it it may be possible not to use these three vectors rather we can also use four vectors or we can use v3 v1 and v0 this is also possible for example if the reference vector is here vr okay uh, so no for example let me take an example 
for example, this is the space vector diagram. And there is a resultant vector which is here, okay. the resultant vector which we want to produce by switching v1, v2 and v0. Okay. So, we have we can take these three as the three nearest vectors which is enclosing the resultant vector v r. But we may also instead can switch v0, v1 and v3. We can switch them because these three vectors are also enclosing the reference vector vr. So, one option, so this is the second option. So, the first option was the first op option was switching V0, V1 and V2, and the second option is switching V0, V1 and V3. Now, which one we will choose? Because both these are actually enclosing the reference vector Vr. When we choose the vectors, remember that we must choose the three nearest vectors which is enclosing the reference vector v r. If we do not choose the three nearest vectors, then the instantaneous error between the vectors and the reference vector will be large. For example, in this case, in this case, this is V r and what is the instantaneous error? So, this is the V 1, V 2 and V 0. So, this is the instantaneous error. Okay. What is the instantaneous error? See, we are trying to produce the resultant vector v r, okay. but there is always an instantaneous error between what we want to produce and what we are actually producing from the converter, which means that v r is the resultant vector which we want to produce, which we wish to produce from the converter. However, we have only v 0, v 1 and v 2 in our hands, because the converter can only produce these 8 vectors. However, I would like to produce v r, which is far away from all these 3 vectors. Okay. So, there will always be an instantaneous error between what we wish to produce and what we are actually producing from the converter and this instantaneous error is the green uh, arrows which I have shown in this diagram. This instantaneous error is the source of harmonics. You see here the instantaneous error if I switch v0, v1 and v3 instead of switching v0, v1 and v2, if I switch v0, v1 and v3, the instantaneous error will be more. For example, if you draw it here, the green, the instantaneous error is more when we switch v0, v1 and v3. And so, we come to the conclusion that if we switch three vectors which are enclosing three nearest vectors which is enclosing the v r vector, then we produce the minimum error. Whereas, if we choose any other vector, 
then this instantaneous error will be more than the previous case. And therefore, the harmonic performance or the, the, mag, the total magnitude of harmonics will be more if we use those v0, v1 and v3 vectors. So, therefore, we will always try to choose vectors which are the three nearest ones to vr and which is enclosing vr. Okay. If we choose a vector which is non-enclosing one, for example, if, if I choose, uh, if my resultant vector which I want to produce vr is here and I switch v0, v1 and v2, what will happen? One of the timing as per the formula, one of the timing will come out to be negative indicating that vr cannot be realized by switching v0, v1 and v2. It will not be possible. So, when we choose, when we want to realize vr, we have to choose the vr which I have shown here. We must choose for example, these three, which are the three nearest enclosing uh, vectors uh, able to realize vr. One more thing that we can, we will see later is that uh, if the, this is the space vector diagram for a two level converter. Later, we will see some other converters which are called say multi level converters, where this space vectors become more and more dense. Okay. For example, in some other converters, we can have, this is the boundary of the space vector diagram of this multi level converter, but we can have many more space vectors. For example, this is the space vector diagram of a three level converter. If you see these two diagrams, the boundaries remain the same in both the cases almost. Okay. The boundaries are same here, but now you have space vectors which are dense, which are closer to each other as compared to the two level. So, this is the two level space vector diagram. This is the three level space vector diagram, which we will see later how uh, this diagram comes. We see that the space vectors are becoming denser and denser. For example, if you go to five level converter, it will even become more and more dense. So, we will have a lot of space vectors and what will happen there is the instantaneous error. Now, there if you have the instantaneous error, suppose you are switching this v r, the instantaneous error. So, of course, we will use this one, this one and this one, these are the three nearest enclosing vectors. The instantaneous error is smaller. As the instantaneous error is smaller, it indicates that the harmonic performance of the three level converter will become superior as compared to the two level converter. So, the instantaneous error is what control the harmonics and we would always like to have the instantaneous error as small as possible. Uh, ideally, the instantaneous error should be 0 because then we produce the v r as a perfect sine wave. Ideally, it should be then 0, but unfortunately, we do not have so many space vectors available in our hand because of the limitation in the converter. If we had a space vector diagram where these space vectors are infinitely close to each other, then we will get a perfect sine wave out of the converter. Coming back to this discussion uh, about this uh, <coughs> space vector PWM, we see therefore that V r into this, this is the uh, V r into T s is V 1 into T 1 plus V 2 into T 2 plus V 0 into T 0, which is again divided into V 0 into T 0 1 and V 0 into T 0 7. So, the 0 vector 
both the zero vectors are used okay and they are used half of the time during the zero period so t01 is one zero vector one uh, zero vector timing duration while t07 is the other zero vector timing duration and they are usually made equal that is t0 by 2 okay in this example vr is the reference vector you want to produce and you will switch uh, v1 uh, that is the space vector 100 0, 0, and you will switch it for t1 duration of time uh, and then you will switch v2 for the which has a switching combination of 110 for t2 time and we, you will also switch the you will also switch the v0 vector for example 0 0 0 combination for t0 by 2 time and v7 vector having a switching combination of 1 1 1 for t0 by 2 time okay so this is how we will switch these four vectors for this time duration uh, in order to realize the vr vector let us see that if uh, suppose vr dash is in sector 4 this is sector 4 okay uh, so if i want to realize vr dash i have to switch uh, v0 v4 uh, v5 and v7 right so i can switch uh, say v0 okay v0 uh, i can switch that is the 0 0 0 vector I can switch for t0 by 2 time okay. and then uh, I can switch uh, v5 which is uh, 0 0 1 and this is switched for uh, say t1 time and then I will switch v4 which is 0 1 1 uh, which is made by the combination 0 1 1 and it is switched for t2 time and then again i will switch v7 which will be done by the switching combination 1 1 1 and i will switch for t0 by 2 time note that when we do this kind of a switching then we are always uh, when we go from one switching state to another switching state there is only one switching transition okay for example in this case you see that when we go from 0 0 0 to 1 0 0 transition then only a phase is changing its state b and c phases are not uh, changing any state so b and c phases the switches will not change their position in a phase there will be a switching change similarly when we go from 1 0 0 to 1 1 0 or when we go from 1 1 0 to 1 1 sorry this is 1 1 1 when we go from 1 1 0 to 1 1 1 then also we see that each time we have only one switching transition this is always uh, maintained in space vector pwm okay now so far we have said that uh, we will switch a vector for t1 period another vector for t2 period and a zero vector for the t0 period but how to calculate this timing duration how much is t1 how much is t2 etc in order to do that we have to get the timing mathematical expression of the timings of this vector so here we have taken an example in sector 1 we see that oc is the uh, vr vector or the reference vector which we are trying to switch now in order to get the timing we can very easily do it by uh, this geometrical analysis okay uh, so we see that this oc vector is uh, nothing but 
the vectorial sum of O A and O B. Okay. O C is nothing but O A and O B and they are forming this triangle. Okay. So, in this triangle we can apply this formula uh, sides of the triangle that is O A, O A. So, the angles are this angle is 2 pi by 3 and this angle is for example, theta that is the reference vector angle. The reference vector is making an angle of theta with the v 1 axis and so therefore, this angle will be pi by 3 minus theta. So, here we can say that O A divided by sin pi by 3 minus theta will be equal to O B in this triangle we see that in this triangle O A divided by this angle will be equal to A C which again is equal to O B A C divided by sin theta and will be equal to O C divided by sin 2 pi by 3 that is what we have written here okay, that from the basic geometrical analysis. So, O A by sin pi by 3 minus theta is equal to O B by sin theta is equal to O C by sin 2 pi by 3. Now, what is O A? O A is the as I told you if you apply the V 1 vector for T 1 duration the net volt second is represented by O A. Similarly, if you apply the vector V 2 for a timing duration of T 2, then the net volt O B is representing the net volt second okay. and O C is representing the net uh, V ref into T s, O C is representing that length V ref into T s. So, therefore, substituting O A uh, as V 1 into T 1, O B as V 2 into T 2 and O C as V r into T s, we get these two equations from which it is possible for us to calculate the value of T 1 as this, this expression here. here. Okay. Here we can say that uh, V 1 is having a magnitude of two third V d. So, V 1 is having a magnitude of two third V d, V 2 is also having a magnitude of two third V d. So, if you substitute here V 1 the expression of V 1 you substitute here and then you will see that we get up to this expression. Similarly, you can get T 2 as this expression here and T 0 that is the remaining of the time for which the 0 vector will be applied. The 0 vector will not cause any addition to the volt second because it is a 0 vector it is a magnitude is 0. So, V 0 into T 0 will not cause any volt second here. So, therefore, T 0 is equal to T s minus T 1 minus T 2. Okay. Now, so these are the timing durations for which the vectors V 1, V 2 and V 0 will be applied in order to realize the reference vector V r. So, you can see here say two cases very interesting is what happens at theta equal to 0. Theta equal to 0 means this green vector is now lying here right 